I was 12 years old, going to movies, sneaking into movies, watching movies I shouldn't have. And Halloween was the pinnacle of all of them. And action. Over the course of the franchise, I've heard so many crazy ideas and pitches. David and Danny's take was very original and different. It's something I hadn't heard of before, that nobody had thought of before. We didn't want to remake Halloween. That had already been done before. They'd walk the line between reinventing something new and bowing to the old. We're here today to interview a patient who spent the last 40 years in captivity. What if Michael had been captured at the end of one? What does that do to the story? How does it change it? I knew I was going to say yes on page four. We just thought Laurie Strode is a pretty interesting way in. Why don't we find a new timeline that could connect to the first movie and we can explore a different path for her? To me, it's really about these three generations of women who are deeply affected by this incident that happened in 1978. Three strong women taking on a unstoppable force. I have tried to protect you and prepare you. Finding the arc of Lori's journey 40 years in the future, where she's basically a character frozen in time. Very broken person, but a determined person. We have to hunt him down. It's been a really awesome experience to watch her revisit this character. I'd say the second she turns, start to start to okay. back. Great. David loves doing this. First time I watched Halloween as a kid, I was so traumatized. For me, it's coming full circle. Dad, look out! It's being in charge of my own demons. It's taking the man of my nightmare. And for once, I get to tell him what to do. I'm gonna have Marion stand in the door right here with her back to us talking on the phone until this shadow has passed. And then he comes in. I've written almost 50 episodes of TV and a few screenplays, and all that time I've barely killed anyone. And if they were killed, they deserved it. And it's weird to kill innocent people. That's the fun of it. You know, they are going about their day, and they don't know they're about to get killed. My favorite death sequence is Oscar getting impaled on a fence. It's based on an idea that I'd been haunted by for 15 years. You come in, stab, and then pull. And I've thought for over a decade, if I made a horror movie, I would have to include that moment. David helped me conjure up that fear, and he got like right up in my face and everything. Please, dear God, help me! Help me! I had no idea how hard it was to do a death scene. Screaming took the wind out of my sails for a week. <laughs> Help me! Help me! Not only was it a little emotionally like, whoa, what just happened, but I lost my voice as well. Set and action. Help me! Help me! Nice. Good take a breather. Really nice. As soon as you're kind of dropped into those circumstances, and you have somebody dressed up as Mike Myers, and you have somebody with a knife, a part of you kind of naturally kicks into that, like, adrenaline mode. You were standing right there in, in the door. Halloween in 1978 was a milestone for horror. Something about the simplicity of the first Halloween makes it timeless. We weren't really allowed to be watching it, but we stayed up later than everyone else. And I was like, screw you, man, I'm going to see it. It just, just bit into me. It scared the shit out of me. Nightmares about it forever. What we wanted to do was make a movie, and we wanted to make a scary movie. And that's all we cared about. Okay, we're set. We're rolling. We're rolling, rolling. Stylistically, we tried to approach it in honor of the film that Carpenter created and trying to re-engineer that in a way, put a twist on that. We were back on shady streets in Haddonfield and kids and trick-or-treaters, and it felt very reminiscent. David Gordon Green has taken all that has come before and taken it a giant step forward. I think they had the tone of it right, right from the beginning. A lot of thought, a lot of care. 
filmmakers who speak a creative language with each other. You scramble, and then you start to scramble, and then we'll cut. Great, and then that's as far as we go. It's a really special, specific mindset that everyone shares coming into this project for their love of the project.